The Last Voyage of Columbus, being the epic tale of the great captain's fourth expedition, including accounts of sword fight, mutiny, shipwreck, gold, war, hurricane, and discovery by Martin Dugard is a non-fiction book about Columbus's final voyage to the land known then as the New World, now considered North America. The book follows Columbus on his final adventure across the seas to the New World, portraying him as a skilled mariner and adventurer, though certainly not a saint. Dugard does not shy away from Columbus's troubled history with enslavement and the killing of native peoples in the lands he discovered. Though historical, the book is written as a classic adventure novel with a strong central narrative. Dugard paints a humanizing portrait of Columbus, a man we often think of as faceless because of the dry accounts in history books. Dugard refers back to his other works to give a picture of what Columbus was like as a man, charming, handsome, and a seducer of rich women to fund his voyages as well as a steadfast and stubborn sailor who often struggled to maintain control of his crews because of his dedication to reaching his destination at all costs. Basing this particular story on the wreckage of a ship found at the mouth of the Panama River that likely was lead by Columbus, Dugard describes the explorer's travails on his final shot to discover the new world. Columbus knew before he set out on his final voyage that this was his last chance. Previous failures made him feel the pressure of this final voyage. He was terrified of the prospect of letting down his funders and not receiving the acclaim and control over the new territories. He so desired. He set sail in the Pinta with his crew, halfway through the voyage, the ship's rudder came loose from the strong waters, causing serious problems with steering and navigation. Columbus and his crew were forced to dock in Jamaica, remaining there for nearly a year waiting for the ship to be fixed so they could continue. Once the rudder was fixed, however, many of Columbus's crew felt that they should go back. They had no idea where they were and didn't feel safe continuing to travel, knowing that they could lose their lives in the process. However, Columbus wouldn't take no for an answer and forced his crew on despite the first of many mutinies. Columbus and his crew experienced a number of other struggles before they finally lost their ship during a serious hurricane. They were attacked by natives, who saw them as enemies. Dugard makes it clear that Columbus's view was that he was in charge of these lands, and often enslaved the natives he met to do his bidding rather than working with them. Indomitable in his desire to find new lands, Columbus ultimately discovered and claimed the island of Hispaniola, named after Spain and now modern-day Haiti and the Dominican Republic, for his king. Columbus lived there for a number of years, with a house and gold that he found among the island's plentiful natural resources before the natives rallied against him and threw him in prison, confiscating his home and all his property. Despite many setbacks, Columbus demonstrated his abilities as an expert captain and navigator. He often could sense the onset of major storms before anyone else, and treated his crew fairly despite their complaints. He had an uncanny sense of direction, ultimately accomplishing his goal of bringing explorers to the new world despite the fact that for hundreds of years that honor went to another explorer, Amerigo Vespucci. Though Columbus did not die with the honors he desired, and struggled against King Ferdinand, who promised Columbus control of the lands he found and then almost immediately reneged on his promises, he experienced more of the world than nearly any other traveler of his time, and maintained a strong relationship with his brother and partner Bartolomé throughout his journeys. Columbus ultimately returned home to Spain two years before his death, and though at the time, he returned shamefully, he would eventually become the most famous traveler to the New World in American history. Martin Dugard, an American author living in Southern California with his wife and family, is a frequent contributor to Fox News and collaborator with writer and talk show host Bill O'Reilly. Dugard has written a number of books, including Farther Than Any Man, The Rise and Fall of Captain James Cook and the Training Ground, Grant, Lee, Sherman, and Davis in the Mexican War. He has also collaborated with Bill O'Reilly on a series about politics and history, including titles such as Killing Reagan, Killing England, and Killing the SS. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.